Okay, so let's have another look at uh, centrality measures in uh, the context of this diffusion process in rural India we were just talking about. And the idea here is going to be to come up with a centrality measure that might even do better than any of the ones we looked at before, any of the standard ones. And I guess you know, once you're in this business long enough, if you've looked at enough networks, you'll find some need to invent a new centrality measure. Um, so what's the idea here? Uh, the idea is we'll define something what we can call diffusion centrality. And the diffusion centrality of a given node i is going to depend on two different parameters. Um, so again, this is out of the project with uh, Abhijit Banerjee, Arun Chandra Sikhar, and Esther Duflo. And what we're doing is now looking at uh, given nodes are informed about microfinance. They, they're going to tell their friends, and eventually we want to see how that diffuses through the villages. Um, but in general, we could think of, you know, there's some node which is uh, initially informed. And how influential is it going to be? Well, we can do a calculation where each uh, node is going to talk to its friends with a probability P in any given period. So I talk to my friends with some probability P that goes on, then they talk to their friends, and we continue on in this manner. And this is going to run for T periods, some number of periods. And then at the end, we'll find out how many people have heard the news by the end of this process. Okay, so, so one way to do this would be actually to simulate it. You could just start with the network and form a node, um, flip coins so that if they tell the, talk to their friends with probability P, and then it goes on, and then just keep track of who heard. Um, another way, an approximation of this, will be just to um, multiply the adjacency matrix by P, and raise that to the t power and uh, multiply by one, so that keeps track of how many people we, we have heard at each point in time. And then um, what we can do is uh, um, sum this from one to t, okay? So th this is gonna be a situation where it's gonna keep track of basically how many walks of different length t multiplied by times a p um, we're going out. So in situations where, where t is just equal to 1, then this becomes proportional to degree centrality. So it's just calculating how many people do I reach um, directly, and so it's just going to be proportional to degree. Uh, if we look at a situation where t becomes large, then this is beginning to look like the Bonisic centrality calculation. And in particular, if p is smaller than 1 over the largest eigenvalue of the matrix, the adjacency matrix, then this thing will converge, and indeed it, it um, will converge to uh, Katz Bonisic centrality, where the p is playing the role of the weight. So this is sort of like doing Bonisic centrality, but with, with a, a, a finite um, t. Um, in, in contrast, if p is larger, so if it's larger than the 1 over the eigenvalue, uh, then as t becomes large, this begins to approximate eigenvector centrality. So this is a, a measure which, for large t, can look either like eigenvector or bonus, some variation of Bonisic centrality. For small t, it looks just like your immediate neighborhood. And for intermediate t, it's going to capture uh, some repetition of uh, numbers of, of communications that you might have. Um, so let's have a look at what this does in the Indian data that we talked about before. And in particular, um, what we've got here is uh, a situation where we've got the diffusion centrality compared to eigenvector, degree, closeness, Bonisic, and so forth that we did in our regressions before. And what we find here is diffusion centrality is significant and significant at a 99% level, so highly significant. Diffusion centrality here is defined by setting P um, actually equal to 1 over uh, lambda 1, so equal to 1 over the uh, largest eigen um, uh, value of the matrix. And so it's, uh, and then running it for some number of periods, which was actually equivalent to the number of trimesters that a village had been exposed to information. So some villages had uh, eight trimesters, some had three, and so forth. But that gave us some number of rounds of communication that might go on in a village. So here we see that this basic measure of diffusion centrality does fairly well. And, you know, the other uh, horse that seemed to be running pretty well is eigenvector centrality. So we can say, well, it, it's hard to compare um, coefficients because a larger coefficient uh, just indicates that the units are different. 
And so if we renormalize things, we could make either coefficient larger or smaller. So in order to figure out which one might be doing a better ex explanation, we can sort of put them together in the same uh, um, regressions where we keep track of, of uh, you know, things like the degree uh, of the leaders, the number of households, self-help group participation savings, um, uh, fraction in the casts, and so forth. So if we keep track of all these controls, then if we do the diffusion centrality, it turns out to be significant. Eigenvector centrality is also significant. When we put them together, then the diffusion centrality remains highly significant and, and doesn't change much. The eigenvector centrality, part of it is, is um, disappearing there. And the idea here is diffusion centrality is keeping track of the fact that communication is not going on forever. It's only going on some finite number of times. And if you have some feeling for that, then this is a very practical measure, which is designed to actually figure out how nodes are, what's their position in, in a network is designed to spread information. And that particular measure seems to do very well in this, this sense. So once we look at a very specific process, that can also suggest how we should measure the importance of nodes. We can, we can weigh them directly by the process that we think might be governing the communication or whatever it is that we're examining in a particular network, and that'll give us a new idea of, of, of centrality measures or other kinds of measures of nodes. Okay, so that's a little more about position in networks. There's a, a lot of ongoing research in this area. It's a, a fascinating area for study. Um, but now what we're going to turn to is, is beginning to understand network formation processes.